Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with a 1956 Beetle right here behind me. This is Eleanor. And Eleanor unfortunately met her demise during a hurricane about uh, 12 years ago and left outside for 10 years to ride. I got her rebuilt her and she's not perfect, but uh, I made her less than perfect on purpose because I wanted a chop top. So anyways, we're doing some modifications to this car, and one of the things that I did last on it was I built a rear hatch for the area here out of a old engine hatch from a 1973 and up Volkswagen Bay Window bus. And oh, there goes my phone, of course, and I just started recording a video. <laughs> they can wait. Anyways, um, build a hatch in here to give it better access to the starter, or the top of the transmission, clutch cable, you know, all the stuff that's just really difficult to work on on a Volkswagen. This will add a very practical utility to it. Uh, the hatch is something that I rebuilt in an earlier video. Here are some uh, bus doors that are actually going to go in here. I'm going to make one good one out of the two. And then here's the, uh, the hatch flange itself. This is what I rebuilt. My microphone falls off and everything. What a day. What a day. What a day. All right. There's the flange that I rebuilt. It required a lot of rust repair around the edges. I mean, it had some really, really fringy edges all the way around. It was just full of holes. This thing, probably anybody else would have scrapped it and just replaced it with another one. But this one was a good enough shape for me to fix, and I like cheap. I don't mind putting a little time in because I've got the skill. So I rebuilt a new flange. But this flange is actually going to get installed right here back of the beetle. Now I'm going to have to do a little cutting down to it to make it fit properly. It's a bit long in its current condition and state, but I'm going to do the best that I can to put it down into here and make it fit properly. Before we get into any of that, please like, comment, subscribe, pluck the little dingle bell you see down there next to the subscribe button and we get updates every time I upload a video. And don't forget, check out Duckman Cycles VW Garage up on the Facebook group page. And if you'd like to email me, duckmancycles at duckshit.net. Thanks again for watching you guys. We're going to go ahead and jump into this and start cutting away at this thing right after that intro. Appreciate you watching. More to come. Okay, we're going to get started back in here, but with the way the time lapse is set up shooting straight down, I feel like uh, Julia Childs or AVE or Big Clive or one of them guys <laughs> shooting down at my work area. You guys will see it in the video, of course. I'm not going to point the camera up at the other one, but you guys get the point. But right in this general area here, we're going to have to lay that flange. Put that flange right up in here. Let's get a basic idea as to how we want this thing laid. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to we're going to trace around the inside of it here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to measure about an inch out from that. And that's where we're going to make our first cut in the body. Once I've got that hole in place, this flange that you see should fall into that hole. And then I can get my final position figured out. And then I can cut through both layers at the same time. And the reason why I do that, of course, is so you get a perfect cut through both layers every single time. It makes the job a whole lot easier to get through. Let's go ahead and start cleaning up in here. First thing I want to do is, is get all these little shavings of dirt and rust and leaves and whatever else is laying in here. That's going to come out, of course, and then uh, we'll start tracing and uh, start cutting. We've got our markings in here. Here's the one I traced. Here's the one I'm going to cut out to. I'm going to get my sawzall and my angle grinder in here. The angle grinder will plunge and then the sawzall will run the cut around it. It's going to be noisy in here. I've got my headphones on, got my goggles on, and of course I've got my vibration work gloves. If you'd like a set of these, there'll be a link down in the video description. You need to protect your hands. One of the reasons why Eleanor is a year behind and didn't get more done last year is because I actually wound up with a vibration problem in my hands because of the vibrating tools caused a, uh, a numbness and a pins and needles feeling that lasted something like six months. And all the doctors said the same thing. Stop handling vibrating tools for a while. It should go away. If it doesn't, you're going to have permanent damage. Well, I stopped with the vibrating tools, got myself a gloves, 
and several months later, when I was back to normal again, I've only used these with vibrating tools. Anything that vibrates significantly anyway, stuff like a Dremel tool doesn't shake enough. I don't really worry about that. It never causes any numbness. But something like a Sawzall or an angle grinder, you know, those guys, oh yeah, they'll get you. So be warned. Alright, that cut out quite quickly. I thought that was going to be a lot more effort than it was. Turned out to not really be all that hard. Here's the piece that removed. Of course, no going back now. What's done is done. <laughs> of course, here is the beam from the dolly. And you can see the areas that I trimmed to clear the kaffir brace that I put in there. And to clear the shock towers, of course, that's right in here. So actually, once this flange is in here, it'll be really easy to box this up the way I want it to do anyway. That way I don't have to work from under the car, I can work from over the car. That makes a lot more sense to me. All right, let's take this flange and drop this in the mold. Let's see exactly what we turn out with here. Yeah, it looks like I need to cut the opening a little bit bigger than an inch. Yeah. But it's already sitting in there flatter than it did before. Well, we're gonna have to do a little bit more trimming to make it fit a little bit better, but uh, it's almost there. Oh yeah, I'm happy with this. Oh yeah. Okay, getting a good look at what I've done here, I actually cut a little more off of the front and the rear because I wasn't sure how I wanted to position this exactly and it looks like I want to put it back as far as I possibly can without tipping it on an angle. I want to keep it flat and level. What I'm going to have to do is do a little more cutting from the flange rather than the hole. See, I did a little bit of cut and actually cut through the firewall here a little bit, so I'll have to weld that back together before I put this in. That's easy stuff. But yeah, this needs to go in place. I think I need to take this raised portion here where the bumps are off, and that includes the places where the, uh, the receivers are for the lid. It goes down into here. I'm going to remove those, put them aside, because I'm going to have to re-engineer how they go together a little bit. But I want that to go in as far back as it can. And the reason for that is because this end over here is all curved. And I don't want to have to flatten it. I want to leave that curved like this. So that way, when I put this down in place, this lip here, I could just bend it a little bit and push it into the contour of what we've got. I think that'll work out real nicely. And in here, in order to make this straight edged, because of course it's wavy from all of these, uh, um, what do they call this? Um, it's a stamping, swedging, the swedging here. What I'll do is I'll, I'll cut a little slice in here, a little slice in here, about half an inch, removing these little pieces and then using my flat pair of vice grips, clamp them like this and then gently weld it through. A nice flat surface to work with, two uh, areas together. That way to transition from the flat go directly into the swedge here and give us a nice, um, well, a nice, nice transition. I think it'll look really good. Okay. Going to continue pushing away at this here. <laughs> 
turned out to be a lot more work cutting than I thought. There's a lot of different angles that I need to uh, think about when you come through here. All right, we're on it. I did a little more cutting here on the front side and a little more on the back side. I accidentally nicked the firewall back here, but that's easy to just patch that up. I cut the flange down on the side that goes against the engine firewall here. This is where the little clips went in for the rear bus lid. And I think I just about have it where I want it. I can't really cut any more out of here because this starts to slope upwards. It's, it's a curved slope, but the two straight edges from the flange here and the cut that I made on the car looks like it's going to put it right where I want it to be. So I think I can start clamping some of this stuff in. Right, just eyeballing things here. It looks pretty good. There's a bit of a gap over here, but I think that's because I need to bend the flange a little bit. Yeah, this needs a little bit of bending and tweaking, but uh, it's almost, almost as I want it to be. Not a problem. I can make some adjustments on this while I'm welding it, but uh, it's almost, yeah, it's almost there. This is just about right. And what I'll be doing here is I'll probably be cutting right in front of these bumps. I think that should get it the way I want it to be. Can almost start tacking some stuff in. Yeah, it's almost there. I didn't expect to get this done today. I really didn't expect to get this done today because I, I just, yeah, I started kind of late in the day and I got a bunch of other things coming. I already got a service call I have to, to uh, attend to, so I'm a little bit busier than I thought I was going to be, but this turned out a little, a little better and a little more finished than I expected it to in a much faster amount of time. Well, let me go ahead and get some pictures here, see if we can get a good thumbnail image of this, because this is looking pretty good. I was going to put some reinforcements around this flange to make it a little stronger. I don't think I need to. Pushing down on the side here, I mean, it's not bending easily at all. Same with the other side. Back here it bends, but it's also not welded in yet. But, uh, I mean, I could run a piece of just angle iron across that and solve that problem. Up here in the front, it's a little flex flexible, a little bit flimsy. So I think I'll run a piece of angle iron all the way across um, from here to here. I'll probably put it inside the flange before I start welding everything together and uh, I should make it a lot stronger than what it is just in case something big or heavy does get put on here so I don't have a you know a type 3 trunk situation where something gets crushed and nothing fits right anymore. Oh, I'm really liking, really liking this. <laughs> the clutch cable would be right over here. The wing nut would be real easy to get to. The starter motor will be right here. Again, really easy to get to. The wires will probably be approximately right here. So I can easily unbolt the wires and then pull the starter out. CV joints will be right about here and here. The uh, top engine bolt, the one that's really, really hard to get out, will be right in front of the wing nut, right over here for the uh, the clutch wing nut. So yeah, this is, uh, this is really nice. That gives me a ton of work, ton of work area inside here. Hell, I could change the shock absorbers from up here too. I hadn't even thought about that. Tops and bottoms, shock absorber. Top will be right here. And the bottom will be reachable down below. In fact, I could take the entire CV joint also from in here because the other CV joint will be over there too, so I could pop out the entire axle without having to put a jack under the car. I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. This is something that uh, I said Volkswagen should have always done, and, and actually they did. They created a hatch that was about one-third the size from about here to about here. You know, it wasn't very big right here in the middle. And you could get to the starter. I guess it was probably a little hard working through a hole that was that small, but you could get to it. Also, you can get to the, the clutch wing nut, so everything was available through there. But this is better. This is just a lot better. I mean, you can get to a lot more in here, and best of all, I'm using Volkswagen OEM parts, and I love that. And I'm sure Volkswagen Planet does too, because he's the OEM king. So for him to uh, watch me using OEM parts, I'm sure he appreciates it, even though it's the wrong OEM part for the wrong vehicle. <laughs> but I'm going to make it fit nonetheless, and it's, it's almost there. It's in place where it needs to be. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more bending and tweaking in here. I'm gonna do a little bit more fitment, uh, some cutting, and uh, let's see if we can uh, maybe get this thing tacked in. This is exciting. <laughs> closed my firewall where I accidentally hit it with the uh, what the hell's beeping everything's beeping my phone's beeping the GoPro's beeping <laughs> anyway I welded in the areas where I accidentally cut through the uh, the firewall this really isn't 
that important, but it, nonetheless, it didn't need to be a split in it there. I'm not even going to bother grinding it down too much because right here is where the two panels are going to join anyway. So I'm going to once again go over the top of that weld one more time. Inadvertently, it's just that's where three panels are going to be coming together. Okay, well, uh, that looks good. Um, I guess we're ready to drop that panel back into place, clamp it in, maybe get it tacked in a couple places up here, and then start running the saws all down lengthwise on both sides until we get to here in the center, tack it in around here, and then uh, i got to figure out what I'm doing for a reinforcement yet. I still need to do something with that. But uh, otherwise, we're almost there, and this is starting to look really good. As you watched in one of my previous videos, I put some uh, welding clamps through demonstrating how to attach two panels. But because on the back side of this there's not enough lip to bite into, this, um, they're not going to be useful here. And just tacking things together and skipping those panel clamps wherever possible is, is probably going to be the best method here. Right along here or along the back I think is where we're going to start tacking a few things in, a few couple spots. And then cutting down the edge here through both layers at the same time. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, now this is the part that everybody that's been following this project has wanted to see since the beginning. And yes, we have a flange that's effectively tacked in now the whole way around. It still needs some welding, and the front here I still need to cut. But I figured just for fitment purposes, let's see what happens when we put the hatch in place. There it is. Locky. And, a locking. and I still have to attach the lock flange on there, that's why it's a little loose, but otherwise that will suck itself down. It looks like the uh, flange is a little bit bent too, but it's nothing that a rubber mallet won't fix when it's in place, once it's welded in. I'm not going to start beating on it or bending on it or tearing, well, tearing it up now while it's just tacked in. I'm going to end up breaking the welds free. I think that worked out quite well, and it's strong, which is what I was hoping for. I was worried that this flange was going to need a lot of reinforcement all the way around it, but it turns out because the flange is damn near as wide as the back of the beetle is anyway, there's all the reinforcement is naturally here, except for in the front section. So I definitely need to add something in here, and like I said earlier, maybe something in the back too. I'll experiment putting a little bit of weight on that and see if it, uh, if it moves. We're rocking and rolling. Boy, that makes me happy to see this. Check that out, watch. It's like this, open. There's my starter motor, there's my clutch. Everything is accessible and easy to get to. And then when I'm done, close it back up. And it's finished. Can do all the work from sitting in the back seat. Of course, the back seat will have to lean forwards, pull the backrest out, but I could easily put the base section in and uh, sit on it and do work from inside the car. I, I, <laughs> you can't see the smile on my face from where I'm at, but <laughs> I am happy. This is cool. This is really cool. 
All right. Back in here where the little uh, hinges go in, there's a little piece that's stock that's supposed to be welded on top there. I'll probably wind up uh, trimming these down a little bit and putting them back where they belong. Which way does it belong? Belongs like that. So I have to do a little bit of trimming in here of the sheet metal to put these suckers back in to get them where they belong so that way they're very factory-like. They latch in pretty good right now where they're just going into the, the sheet metal seams. But I'm going to need to come in here with a die grinder for sure and just cut a little notch out and then put this into place so that way it properly clips in there. Because right now when I open it, you can hear it. It's like grinding and shit. Yeah, it's just not supposed to be like that. These little guys will fix that problem once I get them in place. There it is. Well, anyway, I think that's a great fit. We're just about ready to wrap up for today. I was going to finish doing this cut today, but it's about to start getting dark, and I just got invited to a dinner party, and I've got a service call that I need to do for a restaurant locally that uh, needs my help. That's right. A local fast food restaurant is in need of a superhero, and I'm the only one that can do the job. <laughs> so anyways, I have to hit that on the way there, so uh, I'm wrapping up now. So like, comment, subscribe, you guys. Plug that dingle belly down there that you see next to the subscribe button. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. Don't forget, Duckman Cycles, MVW Garage, up on the Facebook group page. Join. We have 500 members now. 520. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot more than I ever expected it to grow to, and it's you guys. It's, it's my closest friends that are viewing. You guys join me up on Facebook. You guys are really really want to see me and girls there's some girls in there too obviously it's it's a sausage factory but uh anyways if you'd like to email me duckmancycles at duckshit.net thank you very much you guys and uh, i'm gonna wrap everything up so you guys have a good night and we'll see you tomorrow And one more thing, if you'd like to see the midday Q&A, you're going to have to subscribe over to VV the Duck VV. It's my other YouTube channel. I'm not going to be doing so much of the talky talky in this channel. I'm going to be doing more tech like you see here. And I'll do the discussions and answer the questions about it over on the other channel. So thank you guys for watching. Really do appreciate it. And we'll see you tomorrow.